six two. That's where you're at, right? Yeah, that's where you're at. Two, 41 years old. 41 40 years old. Okay. Years old. So one, I want to make sure that all right, is everything dialed in? Have you had a blood test at 40 years old? We definitely want to make sure hormones are all good because you know at 30 it's going to start declining for some people and drastically for others. So at that point, like, want to make sure that that's good because that will definitely help the body stay in line, stay optimal in, in some of these areas. And obviously, if you're rock climbing, this is going to be good too as well. Now, the fasting portion, you know, fasting can be really, really good for people. Um, but abusing fasting, I think, is where it gets out of sight, where people are fasting all the time, every day, all day, and, and not for the right reasons either. So at that point, they think that they're going to get weight loss by cutting out all the carbs, staying all, all carbs forever. And at that point, that could turn around. But the fasting is good. Working out, I would say working out and rock climbing but no heavy weights. So are you advancing and progressing in the weight at all? Because I'm not talking about heavy weights, but if you're doing two and a half pounds every day, you know, you want to progress to a little bit higher. I would think depending on what you're doing, am I right or wrong? <laughs> um, that would be my advice. I mean, at that point, make sure your levels are checked, right? If you, if you really want to dial it in, make sure the hormones are good. And if they are still, there's other things you could do to help maintain this body weight or get better because the whole point would be to get better, right? Not to stay the same. So getting more lean body mass would be the best thing for you, especially at 41 years old. You can still develop some good tissue at 41. So, I mean, the more lean mass you have, the more fat you're going to burn. And honestly, it's going to set you up better for, you know, in those elder years, because that's when you'll start diminishing the most if your hormones are optimized at that point. So it really is dealing with inside first, making sure that's good, and then working on progressing the outside too as well. And that would be to put on lean body tissue, you know? And that doesn't mean like you're, you're gonna be bulking for like 20 or 30 pounds, but some good tissue throughout the year. Two to five pounds, man, you're doing good at that point if you can do that, right? Really good tissue, not fat, not water, but good lean body mass. And that would be that would be my recommendation. I mean, I would definitely increase in some of these areas. I mean, no heavy weights. You know, heavy can be defined by a different person to what it is, right? Mike might think 400, 500 pounds is heavy. I might think 275 pounds is heavy. You might think 100 pounds is heavy. So, you know, it's really dealing with what your body weight is, what you're doing right now. Because if you don't have any disabilities too, as well, like why are you just trying to stay between this point, like? Why does it have to be, a, I guess, a, a body pound goal instead of the way that you look and the way that you feel and, you know, the strength that you have? So I wouldn't cap it out at one one level, I guess, right? Because especially 6'2", six, six I'm six foot, and I stay between 205 and 210 right now. And it's not like I look like I'm not jacked like that, like, right? But, you know, I think I'm like a – and I think that everybody's going for the – brad pitt fight club look now i think that's the goal for everybody that's out there you know the big monster look that's only for a certain crowd i think that at that point like everybody wants that model gq look and at 6'2 you could definitely carry 200 pounds very simply and very easily and look great doing it i think at 175 pounds is too thin to be honest with you at 6'2 Don, you made a statement in your answer. You said you, you were talking about his image builder, do this, and do that. You want to set him up for his elder years. And I think that is such a small statement that can get overlooked by a lot of people. Because a lot of people, I think, maybe aren't concerned with 10 years down the line, 12, you know, 15, 20 years down the line. Maybe they're concerned with you know, this week or next month, uh, short term, but. Right. What you guys are doing at is really helping people accomplish their short-term goals while heading in the right direction towards their long-term goals. It's really going to help right. them the rest of their lives. Right. Those short-term goals add to long-term results. That's just what it is. You got to win the battles to win the war. So, you know, that's that's what I would say any day. I would say, listen, you know, yeah, now is what you want to get to, but at that point you want to look on later down the road. And if you're doing these right things now, like that's just going to add up to later. Like it's, it's not like you have to plan for it. Do the right things now and later on they'll be there for you. If you do the wrong things like, you know, if somebody's like just totally non-active, you know, at that point, they're not going to do themselves any good. So 
I mean, if you're staying at the exact same thing, you're being stagnant and you're dying. If you did that, Chris, NYC hot dog stance, right? If your hot dog stance stayed stagnant every year, you'd be dying in your business. Same way with your body. You want to keep progressing in business. And you want to keep progressing your body and what it is in your health goals. That's what it should be. Just staying stagnant or be like, oh, I just want to maintain this exact weight and this exact look. Like, you can maintain the look and, and probably the weight. But at that point, like, don't you want to increase your strength? Because at that point, you could probably increase your strength or do some other things. I don't I mean, I don't know, but increase some sort of performance aspect. I think, Johnny, you, you crushed that, my friend. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Coming in, I'm like, all right. Yeah. Just for, I mean, the guy said he does dumbbells, 40 pounds and 25 pounds when really tired, not looking to ball, get hurt with heavy weights. So that's what I'm saying. It's not in. Is this uh, the same guy that you just read? Same guy. Same guy. I'm reading on the side. And that's what I'm saying. Like Mike preaches this all day. Like, hey, listen, go slow and steady. Right. And at that point, make sure your, your connective tissues are good. You know, but. What is 511s? I mean, I, I don't know. 62, 175. Okay. Um, oh, I'm, I think that's a difficulty. A difficulty of the lifting, of the rock climbing? Rock climbing. Gotcha. Oh. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, rock climbing alone, dude, this is great for strength, great for hand strength. I mean, if you've tried to rock climb before, like, dude, I love this stuff. I used to do this with Peter all the time when he was young. Like, you know, you could do it. You could race up to the top or you could, they have like these gyms here where you could rock climb around. Super cool and it's super challenging. Seriously, man, it, it really tests your grip. And some of the, some of the guys, you, you know, you could put a big, strong dude that could, you know, bench 315 pounds, whatever it is, and at that point get up there and not be able to do jack. You get some little limb guy that's just wiry and just just going through these things like crazy. I mean, I see it all the time. It's just nuts. So, I mean, and that that Dude, takes strength. We see that all the time. Huh? Let me tell you about the gladiators and what we did to these little guys. We absolutely destroyed their asses. Little 160, 170 pound guys climbing up the wall. Just knowing we came behind them on a five second delay scared them so much. And we jump, we do double flip, we grab twice as fast, boom, up oh, on them. That's sure. said, The only thing I want you guys to read is, is his two comments was. His first one was that he is fasting. If you like fasting and that works for you and that helps you stay consistent, I'm proud of you. Stay with it. Do your thing. I worry at just 40, just 40, that you're you're running away and already playing with how your body functions through the day and running away from food. That scares me. The second part is that you said heavyweight causes injuries. That's your mind approach. In no world does that work that way. Uh, anything and everything causes injury. Moving a couch causes injury. So the concept of your mindset going, I hear heavy weight causes injury. You're right. You do hear that. Except that's not how it is. You just hear that from people that lifted incorrectly or had an accident. It doesn't work. Ego lifting too. Most people that I know that pop their chests and pop their arms and all that kind of stuff do it on warm-ups. Yeah. When they're doing no weight. So it, it just... That's again, that's again, you're doing rock climbing. Let's talk about injuries. That's a wild thing. It's a great thing. So keep that attitude. Keep pushing it. If the fasting works for you at 40, I just worry. And I agree with John. His statement and what Jeff brought up is that you're thinking about now. You're only thinking about now. You're not thinking 10 years from now. Right. And so blood work. I'll work for sure. And then correlate in some kind of future plan that you're getting a foundation right now where you stay 170. I don't care. You want to stay 175, 185? That's that's what you want to do because that's easier for rock climbing. But I would yeah, say retaining muscle as best you can. And you can stay 175 to 185, 6'2. It, it's a good, I guess it's a good slim weight. Yeah. Worry that yeah. in the future you might want to retain some of that more dense, dense muscle from lifting and from doing that. So that's the only thing I worry about. Yeah, because I mean, if you do get injury or something happens down the road, God, God bless, you know, you get something, some disease, whatever. It, the more muscle you have, the more protection you have to a certain extent, like, you know, over time, like to eat away. So, yeah, man, that's. Uh,
I think it's really important for us to be able to build as much lean muscle as possible, you know, and, and throughout your life and, and don't stop working out or doing activity for sure. Next one, Jeffrey. Question, is doing all your workouts since home control better for you? Yes. I think so. I think, again, it's it's all, it's all do slow, control, go fast at times. Yeah. But again, it's just like, we've talked about this. We just talked about size with this last guy. Mm -hmm. I have no agenda for you guys. You guys want to be 150 at 6'5". And that's what you like. Mm -hmm. Great. If you want to train slow and controlled, I think it's great. But just understand that all lifting speeds are beneficial and have their reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, explosion work, great thing. Going slow and controlled, great thing. Just, I would, I would not try to limit the one. Yeah, explosive training, obviously. I mean, that, that's how you really build strength like that, right? I mean, you know, I mean, you're really pushing it up and then taking it slow. And then, you know, as far as that going back down and then and exploding up every time. Just there's so many different ways to lift. I think it just, I think they all play a part in just staying balanced. I like to get in a rhythm. Once I'm in a yeah. rhythm, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm moving, you know, I'm just moving. I'm feeling the contraction, I'm getting the rope, you know. The, the stretch that I need and everything. So that's what I do. But you're also a jacked, yeah. you know, six, <laughs> two, 10, 15 looking abs I'm walking scared. around. I, I'm so. scared my, 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 my shoulder is going to get stuck in one spot. <laughs> I'm like the tin man. I need some oil. We got, we, we did a, a couple of fun stuff this week. And speak, speaking of, of uh, fast, we were doing 20s to 30s on bell squat, just partials. But before that, we were doing 10-second pauses on the squats. So, again, we correlated in the same workout, two different facets. And nice. Again, it's just, again, try everything, guys. Try everything. Uh, everything works for a bit. Then mm -hmm. your body adapts. Yep. Nice one. Johnny, what advice do you have for a 14-year-old trying to get as big as you? Eat. 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 Train, sleep, eat, train, sleep, eat, train, sleep. You're 14. You're going to use a couple of great things. Uh, uh, I, it's tough to say this to a youngster, but uh, get your sleep. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. Um, but get your sleep. Continue to grow. Uh, and just eat. You're growing so fast. I got a couple of friends that had two kids. And both kids uh, they fed them and fed them and fed them. And they were very heavy. But the great thing about kids, they grow, they grow, and those calories help these kids. And they're as thin as can be, you know, two years later, three years later. No, that's I'm just speaking of a, a very young kid. It works through going through puberty. You know, I, that's where I put on a hundred pounds during puberty. So eat, eat your food, eat healthy. Do not do this new age stuff that they call, uh, what's it called? Dirty bulk. Oh, dirty bulk. I hate this. Yeah. yeah, that's not a thing, guys. It's not a thing. Just so you know, because it doesn't take that much to get your surplus of calories. And to think that you have to do a, uh, I guess, milkshakes with Oreo cookies in, which sounds really good to me. Now, hey, now you're hitting, uh, I might, I might get Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> But that's that's not where you want to go down the road because there's other facets to that by eating that way too. That you just, for sure. I think just eat the best you can. Uh, you know, if you're having a hamburger, have cheese on it. If you, if you if you're eating some steak, have some little sauce on it. But don't be so strict that it's chicken and broccoli. That's definitely not for you kids. You get to be 30, 35 years old. You want to do the fish, the chicken, and broccoli. That's great. You teenagers, puberty, eat. Eat your carbs. Eat food. Johnny, what do you got? Because I know you have at home a metahuman <laughs> that's taller than I am and barely 15 years old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I push the exact same thing, right, that Mike is saying. And, you know, with my son, it's kind of hard. You know, his coach is telling him at school, like, basically the dirty ball. I don't care how you get the calories, get the calories, eat the calories. I'm like, dude, that is not the way to do things. I'm like, what's going to happen is, and listen, young kids can eat really bad and get away with it, but eventually it's going to catch up with them one way or the other, and they will start gaining weight. 
And that's why most kids these days are obese and overweight too as well. So we got to really look at good eating, eating good food. I mean, listen, eating candy all day equates to calories, but they're empty calories. There's nothing in there that's going to benefit you whatsoever. So at that point, really getting in food that's going to basically give you the nutrients you need to grow. I mean, it's like anything else. Your body needs these things. And if you're not giving it to them, it's not going to grow optimally. And that's what I tell my son all the time. And he always kicks it back in my face because he wants to eat what he wants to eat. But I'm still pushing down his throat like, hey, listen, nutrition's key. And he's starting to come around. He's starting to eat some of the prep meals and stuff like that. Um, but listen, it's, it's, it's really hard with kids. It really is. There's so many different things out there as far as um, distractions and then people that, you know, basically – if they're around all their friends and all their friends are drinking pop, eating Doritos or whatever the hell they're eating these days, right? McDonald's, that's going to make them want to eat that. And at that point, like if they don't, then they're going to be the odd man out. And sometimes, you know, those kids are like, oh, why aren't you eating this? Whatever it is. So it's tough. But, you know, at that point, if you're a dedicated young adult and you want to thrive in an area of athletics, or you want to get big per se, and you want to look good being big, not a sloppy big, then at that point, you're going to do what you want to do and do what you need to do. And that would be, you know, doing some of these right things. And I, I don't know, man, like I've seen some kids that come over my house and like, I have steaks already prepped and I'll be like, Hey, Peter, you want a steak? No. When I offer th those steaks to those other kids, because they don't get it offered to them all the time. Oh, Mrs. Secours, can I have a steak? I'm like, yeah, no problem, you know? And then afterwards, can I have another one? I'm like, yeah, no problem. So, you know, those are kids that, that will do it. And, like, they should want to eat good food. Like, good food tastes good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, junk food, it, it, it hits their dopamine receptors. It makes them feel good for a little bit. But it's it doesn't really make you feel good. And that's why a lot of people feel bad about after they're eating it. So, you know, if we can push this, if, if you're a young adult and you're eating good food, you're going to grow a lot better than eating junk food. Can you throw in the occasional milkshakes and stuff like that? Absolutely. Especially if you need to hit your calories. Because if you're eating chicken and broccoli all day, it's tough to get that many calories in because you got to eat a lot of meals to do it. So you got to start, you, you know, you, you don't have to be as hard on yourself as per se me. But you should want to have discipline in what you're eating. I think that's the biggest thing. Start being disciplined. Discipline will get you to your goal. Set the goal and be disciplined and then set an action plan of how you're going to get to the goal. And that's good eating. Good eating, good training and sleeping. I mean, listen, and water. You you want to you want to grow like those those are the those are the secrets to grow. That's the secrets to growing. He knows he has a, a young metahuman that's going to just fill out over these next years. Pop protein too. I mean that that's another that's another big one. I, I don't think enough kids get enough protein per day. I mean even um you know for I'm gonna I was thinking about changing Peter because you know the, the protein shakes are great, but sometimes I think he needs a meal replacement too to really want to grow, you know and get some of these different things. So I think that might be a good viable thing for some of you guys out there. And if you guys are on the go and all that and you guys can't get your meals like us, then that's when you have to start looking and then you have to start preparing. Prepare for your day like. You have to take a cooler to school, bring a cooler to school, and then have your stuff there, and then you can drink it down. That's a smart play. Like, man, like I can't tell you guys. You know, that's 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 the best thing. Like, I'm the I'm the cooler guy now. I have I the was, cooler I everywhere I go. I was, you don't even know about the igloo. About the igloo. <laughs> that's that's right. what I used to school. My mom would, would make uh put all the sandwiches and milk in an igloo, and I'd just I'd eat that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's back in the 80s, guys. That's what we were doing. Um, he said a couple things here. The discipline of eating the meals. For all you teenagers, protein drinks are great. But 100% food replacement drink. And Jeff's going to get some of these videos up we did yesterday and today. We have this ninja creamer thing. And it just, it just mixes it up and makes it like a little yogurt meal. But we had uh, a couple scoops of protein, some bananas. We had um, uh, granola in it. Um, a nice crispy treat in there. Uh, nice. So we had a good, just a simple drink, 1,000 calories, um, you know, uh, over 90 grams of protein. Uh, so it was it was just a great, like, 
real pre-workout meal and a post-workout meal for us. But that's when I'm extreme calories. So for you guys, you guys should be that way. You guys should be really uh, some good food and find out what's your what's your sur what's your surplus. Where's where does your number need to be? And don't go off the books. Uh, if you want to start with the books and what your percentage is, and you guys are a different breed when you're at that age. You guys are growing so much. You're growing. Yeah. Just so you understand, you're growing during puberty in that 14 to 17 to 18. You're growing better than any humans on the planet. That, that's the yeah. best ages. Because you're, you're building stuff on top of it, too. And you're really setting your, your frame up for your whole, whole life. It really is your foundation. It really is to a certain degree. I mean, when you're younger, yeah, your foundation's there. But I'm talking about, like, in the growth stage. Puberty at that point, like, that's the best environment for your body to grow in. Great. Great one, Johnny. Appreciate that. What are the best lifts and way of training for a linebacker to hit harder? Yeah. Yeah. Explosive training, right, Mike? I mean, that'd be one. Yeah, I definitely throw in some, uh, just some uh, cleans, just power cleans, hip thrusts. That that not a hip thrust exercise, but use the hips on that explosion on a clean. You don't need to do as the press as much, but the power clean, just the snap of the hips. That's going to be your go-to. That's going to be everything that you're going to, mostly for the linebacker, so you can drop in and, and lay these guys out. I would stay with some split squats. I would do some walking lunges. Um, again, football is hips, hamstring, lower back. Those are those you need those powers. And I was just watching an old school Archuleta. Uh, video about explosion and connection and, and the way that he trained off of the combines think about that when you're lifting do the explosion lifts do the explosion so they kind of release the bench press at the top catch go again catch 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 mm -hmm. so there's a lot of that kind of stuff the quick reaction grabbing the dumbbells so it's a completely different world um, but you're a linebacker and, and you want to get bigger, stronger, faster, hamstrings, glutes, lower back. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And that's that's really, it's all, you know, finesse sports or, 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 or skill sports, baseball. Mm -hmm. Still need those hips, hamstrings. For sure. I mean, back, I mean, your core is everything, though. I think in any sport. Not bowling. Bowling is uh, how many beers you can drink and cigarettes you can have. But besides that, I've seen some good bowlers, man. Uh, I've seen some people just like just blow my socks off. Might need the movie Kingpin. <laughs> Red stew. You don't know. Yes. You don't know. It's been too long. Go for it, Jeffrey. What do we got? Johnny, do you see something good there too? Just shout it out. Uh, I don't see anything in this point. I, mean, I can talk to you about what we got going on this week, though, real quick. I would love a little update on. Um, All right. It is Black Friday, right? Yeah, so it's Black Wednesday. So Titan has Black Wednesday because we don't wait till Friday. We've always had Black Wednesday, and that's Titan's biggest giveaways of the year. So I'm going to go live. Uh, what do I say? 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 3 p.m. And at that point, I'm going to give away free blood work at least two every hour, that I, well, every time that I go live. I'm going to give away free Titan gear, um, some gift certificates, maybe like 100 bucks, $200 gift certificates at a time so people can get some blood work or add it to their account or maybe want to become a patient. Um, and then, you know, I don't know. I've got some extra – I've got some, some secret stuff I'm going to give away too as well. So, you know, you never know. I might give away a free therapy like an amino acid therapy or something like that or – I don't know. I, I just get crazy. So I'll give away a whole bunch of blood tests. So I'll give away at least six to eight blood tests that day, guaranteed. Maybe more. And then, like I said, free a whole bunch of free Titan merch. And then gift certificates, I'll give away at least two every every time I go live. And then, like I said, I've got some other stuff I want to give away, but I don't know. I'm trying to decide what other special things I can do. So the main thing for everybody out there is just follow Titan Medical and yes. look for the lives and jump in there and, and ask yes. good questions and rock and roll yes. on that. Yeah. And then we have uh, our special of the week, which is our Titan Slim Package. And the Titan Slim Package is AOD 9604. 
and ECA Stack Plus, and you'll get a discount on the package of those two together. So if you're ordering those two, now you can save some money on it. If you wanted to get these things, then you can save some money on it. So either way that you win, and at that point, involving AOD, which is a weight loss peptide that's going to burn fat and help you not store fat in the body, is going to be great. And then you're going to be able to get some sort of stimulant and energy factor from the ECA Stack Plus, also creating thermogenesis to help aid in that weight loss too as well. So expediting the results for you guys all the way across the board. John, speaking of those two, would that be something that uh, Buddy here should look into because he feels like he's overweight? He's 60, yeah. 70, and he's so yeah. young, good, good age. What's the recommendation yeah. here? Would it be step one, blood work? Step two? Yes. Definitely blood work for this guy to see what's going on because there's gonna be there can be some different issues going on. At six foot, two hundred and seventy pounds, that's a little bit overweight, right? That's that's where we not we do not want to be at unless this is just pure muscle. And even at that point, it's going to be a little bit more for your frame than you can handle. Um, so we definitely want to get this down. So what diet nutrition plan do you recommend to become healthy again? This is eating good foods, right? And then you'd have to go to somebody like Mike where they can create a whole meal plan for you and go through this. But from my side of things. You're going to definitely want to get a blood test and see where are your hormones are at, how everything's looking on the inside. Now, after that, that's when we can personalize a regimen. And it could be anything from the tight slim package with AOD 9604 and ECA Stack Plus. Or if we're going for more aggressive weight loss, it could be maybe a GLP-1 like semi-glutide or tears epitide. There could be a lot of different options that we could use for this patient. But we need to know all its health history and all that too as well just to make sure we can recommend what's right. But there is a lot of light at the end of the tunnel for you. You're very young. We can definitely get this weight off. That's a guarantee. And at that point, it's just going to take you taking the first step to be able to sign up with us and let us do our thing with you and get you to where you want to go. Uh, I know that you said I could help them with the nutrition and the training and all that, but I agree right. with you. And this is a team effort here. I would of course. Have to set him up on a nutrition plan. And I wouldn't want to set him up on a training plan because he's here right now. And he goes, Hey, best advice. My best advice is find out what's going on with your body. And that's the blood work True. first. And again, True. John is going to be giving specials out right now. So this is a great time for you to go, Hey, you know what? Let me start before the new year. Yep. And that way, if we know your body is not functioning right, John and the team is going to help you out. Yep. Now, John and the team help you out to get it right. Or let's say, great news, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Well, then what can we do on nutrition and training would be easier for me because I know your body's working correctly. Let's get you on the right plan. Let's move forward. And I still mm -hmm. think step one for anybody in today's day and age, something I could not do when I started, is go get the inside checked. Get a tune-up. Find out what's going on. See if everything's working fine. See if you're not even just your testosterone, but everything. And in, I know 34 to me sounds like you just got out of puberty, right? 34 to the body, everybody talks about this. Every influencer out there says, oh, 34, that's old. Your body's shutting down. Your testosterone's gone. It's like, so I'll go off of their echo is, well, let's find out if that's true or not. And that is only done, in my opinion, yeah. uh, through Titan Medical. And I'll say this on top of this. The reason I say only through Titan Medical is because I know some of these other companies out there and how much they try to uh, upsell. Yeah. yeah, it's like I had a person, a young 20, absolutely nothing wrong with this kid. <laughs> He came back to me and said, Mike, these people that you sent me over to did my blood work. He sent me the blood work. And they hated that I got cops in the blood work. And I understand why the company hated it, because I saw what they were doing. And it was like, mm -hmm. the only reason you hate it is because you guys are lying to people. Yeah, right. That's why you, right. you hate me getting the blood work, because I'm going to look at this and go, why are you selling them $10,000 worth of stuff? <laughs> For a 28-year-old that's healthy, what are you doing? 
That's crazy, man. That is crazy. It's still, it's still crazy to me. Because he's a millionaire, we're going to freaking load him up like this. But then it came back that other people that weren't millionaires uh, were getting that, right? I got hit with like the, the, you 18, got hit. the 18 grander. I was like, <laughs> whoa. whoa. Oh, take, take over serious? for a second here. How does this happen? Eighteen thousand. How do they think people? Ha- I mean, honestly, guys, there might be some people out there can afford that, but the general, like everyday person, is not going to be able to afford eighteen thousand dollars, right? Even four thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. I mean, we're a thousand dollars is a lot of money, guys. I mean, come on. I mean, you know. I mean, I understand it depends on how much they're getting too. So if they want you know the whole buffet of everything, yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money. But and at the end of the, you point, can't put a price on your health. I understand that. You know, yeah. you got to get healthy. You're going to have to spend money to take care of yourself. But yeah. you shouldn't be told by somebody who's in a position to tell you, hey, you need this, 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 this. this right, this, this, right, this, right, right. No, this, yeah, that's wrong. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, yeah, that's wrong. Even for us, like, you know, we'll go in with an HRT patient and they, they might talk about some other goals, right? Mm-hmm. But the main thing they need is HRT. Like, if they have low testosterone, right, like, right, that's right. the main priority. So, like, if they go in there and, like, let's say, you know, the provider's like, well, you can benefit from a GLP-1 and maybe test some Rowan. Mm-hmm. And then the medical assistant goes in there and she's like, hey, listen, she's like, this is what the provider recommended, these three things. It's going to be maybe two thousand dollars and then the guy's like you know it's sticker shocked or he's like i don't have two thousand dollars like that right well listen this other stuff is the little extras right but your main meat and potatoes what you really need is the hrt to get fixed and that's 350 bucks okay cool i got that no problem let's go on and that's how how much impact is that gonna have on his life huge huge you know like that's what i'm saying like if you give them what they really need, like HRT and they have both testosterone, you're going to change the game for them in so many different ways right then and there. And they don't need all the extras right then. And honestly, it's overwhelming to a lot of people that get all that stuff at one time, unless they're a seasoned person in it. Right. right? right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, like a regular person, like they show up and I've had them call me like, and, but Hey, listen, I just got eight vials. Like, I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed by this. Like, I don't even know if I can do this. Like, can I just send this back? And I'll get on the phone, but Hey, listen, I understand you see these vials, you see 300 syringes and needles there. This is very overwhelming. Make your head spin. Let, let's go through a tutorial so you get more comfortable with it and really explain how it's going to benefit you and then utilize it and then, you know, kind of go from there. And, and then that's all I really need. It's on your social media, on your YouTube page, you have a lot of tutorials as well, yeah. which I don't see anybody doing that. It's so great. Tons. Tons. Yeah, we want to educate our patients too. We want them to know what they're taking and why they're taking it. And then we want them to be able to use it comfortably, right? Like a lot of people haven't done injections. I think now, of course, there's a lot more people have done injections. But I mean, I would say like five years ago, it was like seven out of 10 people have never done an injection before to themselves, unless they were a diabetic or, or, or such and such. So um, at that point, like it's just, it's a little bit intimidating for somebody. And it's kind of like a self mutilation thing, like, oh, I don't want to hurt myself type deal. Um, but once they do it the first time, it's nothing. And I always call them like, man, you're a survivor. Now you can do this. You're good to go. So, uh, yeah, I think that's just a little intimidation factor. But once they get through it in the education, but these places out there, man, doing that to people, it's just wrong. It's wrong. Um, somebody had a question here related to that. If you start on TRT, you have to stay on it forever. Great question. I get this question. I've got this question throughout my 12 plus years in this business. John, if I stay TRT, am I going to have to do it forever? I don't want to do this forever. Or how's this going to work? So when you start TRT, you don't have to stay on it forever, okay? But if you want to get off, there's a way to get off. And when you do get off, your levels aren't going to be where they were when you were taking testosterone. So it's going to come down because there's nothing that recharges the testicles to start producing testosterone like it used to. If we had something like that, we would not need places like me for TRT. We can just do peptides and weight loss and we can recharge your, your own gonads and you'd be ready to rock and roll, but that doesn't happen. So that's where you need to see on TRT forever. The forever is if, if you want to feel like that the whole time, then you're going to stay on it. It's kind of like somebody that goes on cholesterol medication. If they can't get their cholesterol down naturally and they need to be on the medication and they don't take the medication, their cholesterol is going to be up and that can have an effect blood pressure, whatever it is. So it's the exact same thing. 
So if you want to have those levels and you want to feel good like that, then you need to be on testosterone. If for some reason, let's say you get prostate cancer and you need to come off testosterone, there's a way to get off and you're not going to feel like you did when you're on testosterone, but we can hopefully help you not crash your levels because that's when people start feeling bad. People start feeling bad when they are on testosterone and then they just go cold turkey. You go cold turkey, your levels are going to go here to here and you're going to feel it not only physically, but mentally too as well. So, you know, at that point, you know, listen, TRT is a great thing for people that need it. If you don't need it, don't start it. When you do need it, you're going to need it. And when you do need it, you're going to feel better when you take it. So that's, that's the advice that I would say. There's no reason for you to want to get off of it unless, like I said, maybe it's a financial thing or maybe it's a health thing. But I'll, I'll tell you this much. I think, and you know, a lot of people out there probably wouldn't agree, but you know, our clinic, you know, for my dad, like he was on testosterone the whole time. He was on cancer treatments. And I think that that saved his ass from dwindling down to nothing. So at that point, like, I think there's some big benefits to being on testosterone if you need it. Um, and at that point, I would say, if you don't need it, don't start it, but you don't need to be on it forever. But uh, if you want to feel like that, you're, you're going to have to take it. Uh, I'm on mute. Okay. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Johnny. At some time, I would love to talk about cholesterol medicine uh, and why someone should do it. And also the concept of some people eat healthy. They train, they do all what they're supposed to do from their doctor, and they still have that high cholesterol. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just kind of, I think it'd be a yeah. great future to dig into it and go, well, why, is, why do some people just naturally have that higher cholesterol reading. Uh, I think the it's people. a good one. Yeah, I think it's, it's a great insight because I, I get so many people that check in with me going, hey, I got my blood work done. Mm-hmm. I eat fish and broccoli, the, the, the mm-hmm. fish and broccoli mm-hmm. thing. I do my cardio and I uh, have my healthy fats, but my numbers are still wild. So, yeah, I mean, listen, so we got to look at, you look at both HDL and LDL, good cholesterol and bad cholesterol on that. And then you look at the ratio. I mean, some could be a little bit higher than normal, but if the ratio on the bottom end looks good, then they're probably going to be good. Now, a lot of people like they can attribute like high cholesterol to genetics, to bad diet, um, non-exercise and all these different things. I think if you're doing the right things, your cholesterol should move in the right direction and start going down. You know, I mean, you know, obviously there's those cases out there that they say that they're doing everything right and it's not not ticking down. It's not good. So, you know, we really have to dive deeper into what is really going on with that, because, you know, those are case by case scenarios. And uh, most people, I would say, that do follow the good diet, the training, usually their cholesterol does start coming down. But cholesterol medications are heavily prescribed out there and they're easily prescribed. That's the bad thing is that. Somebody goes in and let's say they might have a skewed result, right? And that means that the lab messed up in some way, shape, or form. And it happens, guys, from time to time. And the cholesterol is high. And then, you know, they go in front of the physician. The physician says, oh, man, your cholesterol is, is, is really, really uh, alarming to me. And at that point, like, you know, not to recheck it would be a disservice just to make sure. But they, what they do is they throw them on a, a cholesterol medication right then and there. And it just, it, it goes on from there. And then they're on cholesterol medication from then on out. And they might not really needed it. And they might needed a change in their diet. Like, we don't really know exactly what they're eating. When they say good fats to you, are they, are they really getting good fats in or are they getting bad fats in? I mean, that's kind of where you really you guys start really diving in and really asking some more questions. Yeah, I'd love to dive into this. Uh, uh, again, I, I hear the negative. And so I hear the guys that are like, I do eat well. They do eat the healthy stuff. Yeah. They do train, and they still come back with that high cholesterol. And they do get the double check, um, but they still come back with it. So, want to kind of go into just family history? Yeah. So things are working that way, and so the pros and cons of doing something from cholesterol on a medication it would be an interesting yeah, go- for a lot of people. Yeah, cholesterol is key. We t- talked about that. I just had a. a uh, a friend, we talked about this last week, uh, is 30 years old, dies, heart attack, yeah. you know, and again, we're talking visually, 
visually. Stunning. You know, he was a model. So, yeah. you know, a good looking cat, great physique, trains hard, positive lifestyle. Um, you know, and, and, and again, 30, that's an age we shouldn't see this stuff from. Uh, to to lose them, and so there's family history that goes in this stuff. I'm not saying that that was over here, but I just want you guys to be able to take care of yourselves and check the blood work. And if you do vi visually look good and feel healthy, still check the engine, as Johnny would say. And Johnny definitely got to check the engine for sure, hundred percent. You got to make sure everything's right, working right on the inside for sure. One thing that Jeff I mean, and I talked about is that your new ads. Oh, oh, you like it? <laughs> one second, one second. One I think second. they're gonna. I think they're gonna really poke people. I think the the one especially, <laughs> the one about the pants is gonna be. Yeah. Mm, Johnny, give, us, give us, give us, this. Tell us what's up, Jeff. The pants. You like them? I think that was probably one of the best ads I've seen in my life, <laughs> and there is no perfect time to bring back that kind of advertising that right now then right now it's what i thought man so, i was like you know what i'm sitting there with andreas i'm doing these voiceovers and i'm like you know what give me that damn mic i'm like i'm gonna start making some voiceovers that are really yeah. gonna just poke people a little bit to get their attention and to get on their skin so they may start making a change because they'll, they'll start looking at themselves and like oh shit, like this is me so i probably might get some flack about it but 80% of our audience is male, right? So at that point, like, I'm sure some of those guys are in that position mm -hmm. where the wife or girlfriend's asking them how they look in these pants or how do I look in this outfit? Does it make me look fat? And if you're a boyfriend or a husband, you better say she looks great. But in your mind, you might not be thinking that. You might be thinking, honey, you better start going to the gym with me. You know, because you don't look like you should in that outfit, right? But you don't want to tell her that. You don't want to hurt her feelings. Yep. I'm not here to hurt yep. people's feelings. <laughs> I'm here to change your lives. And if I have to be a little brutally honest to change your life, I'm here to do that. Like, I'll do that for you. But at that point, I think, hey, listen, call. And give them a gift certificate. And at that point, they're doing something for their health. And they're going to make them look better in that outfit and pants that they want to fit in. So you guys will see the video. I think it's a little bit more. I think the in-law one was good, too. I'm sure a lot of people obviously feel like that about their in-laws. I don't. I love my in-laws uh, or in-law. But at that point, like, uh, yeah, I'm sure some people are going to definitely get, get some some uh, some flack from it. But I think a lot of people are going to like it. And a lot of people are going to get some laughs. And like you said, I think it's a perfect time right now in this uh, current environment that we're in to really put it out there. Mm -hmm. All, All right. Here's a good one for us. All right. It says, hello, Mike, what do you recommend for endurance workout and how do you incorporate it with weightlifting workouts? Do, do you do well, anything like that, Johnny? It, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, it, it, listen, endurance workouts, right? That means you're going to have to increase the, increase the volume, right? You're going to increase the volume in sets. So do more. What does that mean? That means that, listen, you know, for me, what, what I try to do for endurance um, in all training is I would try to do my regular three sets and I work up in the pyramid scheme as far as that goes progressively in weight. And then I'll drop down my fourth set and then I'll work out. I'll, I'll do it to, to failure basically on that set. And that would be a little bit more endurance training for me, like as far as that goes. But you got to increase volume. Like that's what it's all about. Increasing volume, increasing endurance, increasing stamina. So heavier weight, more times. That's that's what I would I would aim for, and just progressively getting heavier and heavier and heavier as much as you can do. So Jeffrey, you got anything on that one? I incorporate endurance work. I need to incorporate that. <laughs> He's got a girlfriend. He does that all the time. It's just not in the gym. Well, what, what did we do? Was that yesterday? We squatted. That's endurance, right? It's pause squats. Ten second pause. 405 on the bar, some good weight on the bar. I think that's yeah, that's a, it's, a, it's a good concept. Um, I try not to mix match. For me, I, I try not to mix match. I try to use weightlifting for exactly what it is, and it's to to build that muscularity, the skeleton muscle, and the and the stress to the bones. Uh, so I try to just focus that that's what that is for. So for me, I don't incorporate any cardiovascular to my workouts. I, 
it's like if if first period of class is math, I'm not trying to do English in math class. I do my workout for what it's made for. Uh, if I'm going to do endurance or like I, I, I roll a lot now, I will do that at jujitsu and get this the wheels rolling more there at the end of class. I'll do a slaughter line like we did last week. It was me. As soon as I got the guy or he got me, the next guy would jump on me. Next guy, next guy, next guy. I know that sounds a little bit perverted, but um, that's that's my concept. My concept is got that. use it for what you're supposed to do it. And so, unfortunately, I wouldn't recommend because what happens is, and I see it in the gym all the time, is that the person tries to make the workout around the sport a little too much or past the time. And then it turns mm. into just mileage, 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 mileage. Mm. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm, I'm surprised a lot more people aren't asking how to prepare for, for the holiday eating. Like, what should I be training? How much should I be training? Can I take a day off, Mike? They should be on MK. Many, yeah, MK for sure. If you're trying to grow, for sure. And especially right. well, MK the so they're more hungry so they can start eating in the morning and go late yeah. into the night. <laughs> well, you know, you never know how many places they got to go. At. I, I said this all the time. Like when Teresa's dad was alive, we had to go to four places on Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that. So we're eating four different times. So think about that. And if you didn't eat at these places house, Jesus, you, know, you get slapped by the side of the head, man. Right. So what are you going to do to prepare for that? And then if you're overweight and obese and you're not like us in shape or whatever it may be, how are you going to combat this overeating during the holidays? And that, that should be really what you're looking at doing. And if you're really looking at doing something like this, I would portion size your meals or wherever you're going to go. So if it's one place, still have a portion of what you're going to eat. You can indulge a little bit and then increasing activity, maybe increasing the day beforehand and then increasing the day after and what you usually do. So if you just weight lift for 30 minutes, I would definitely weight lift, do some cardio. I mean, do weight lift for 45 minutes, do 15 minutes of cardio. At that point, try to burn some of those calories off that you, you've taken in, depending on how much you ate, too, as well. I mean, is, you know, that, that's your, a big thing. What's your go-to? Because I know that you're always on point. Are you going to have a couple big meals that day, little cheap meals, maybe the special cookies, anything like that? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably be eating some cookies, for sure. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a cookie guy. I wanted some cookies. But cookies my go-to, really really yeah, hell yeah, they are, man. I, I mean, uh, I feel those cookies. But... um. You know, at that point, I, I would eat, like, white turkey meat. I eat a lot of white turkey meat. And at that point, like, I think I'll eat some mashed potatoes. And that's really it. That's Or maybe some ham. I think that, that might be a little fattier. But that's that's my go-to for any holiday. It's, like, ham, turkey, mashed potatoes. If there's corn on the cob, there's no nutritional factor there, only roughage. But I'll eat some corn on the cob. Because you don't stress. Corn. You don't stress huh? about going in town and eating. And you don't stress about no. Well, you, this is how I look at it, right? No, so you have a good relationship, if, right? Yeah, if we're if we're eating if we're eating like you know like uh, like holiday food like you know turkey, ham, and all this, you're, you're eating. You might be overeating, right? But you're not eating like let's say McDonald's. So it's it's better food. It's a better food source in most cases, depending on where you got it. Why does Johnny always eat? pick on McDonald's? <laughs> Why is he picking on Trump's place? Come on now. Listen, I, I love McDonald's, <laughs> right? I grew up on McDonald's, but do I think McDonald's is the healthiest thing for somebody to eat? Hell no. Do I think that people can reward themselves by eating McDonald's once in a great while? Yes. Will I do it? Probably not, right? That's just me. But if You're you want to do it, that's cool. Listen, I'm all for them. Back in Trump, him doing it there. Like, I'm all, like, and, and you know what would be the best thing? Is that they do make the changes. RFK does. Because... If you eat McDonald's over in Greece, Mike, it's way different than you eat McDonald's here. Ingredients, chemicals in there. I mean, it's 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 My different. My voice change this world. I can't wait. I, I cannot wait. Like it would be, it's a breath of fresh air that these That's things will, someone will be looking to protect us in what we're eating because everybody assumes that everything in the grocery store is safe to eat, and we don't know that. We don't know the long-term damage that some of these things are going to do to our body or our health. So at that point, I think it's going to be a good thing. Somebody needs to regulate my, these things. I think it's one of my guys that uh, I, I follow, a great guy, and he's always at these hearings. And, and one of his hearings, they were asking him about uh, 
the information about food. He's talking about there's actually a health food section at the grocery store. So if there's a health food section at the grocery store, what does that make the rest of the grocery store? And it's like, dude, you just <laughs> the whole panel's up there going, ah, you got us. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's I, I think you have a great relationship, and I want everybody here to know. I think it's okay to have that high day in celebration and just try to keep this year as we continue forward, let's make a better relationship with food. And it doesn't mean go from what you're doing to not eating. It just means pull it back a little bit. Let's, let's have a little bit more. Hey, Sundays for fun during the week. Let me be a little disciplined. And speaking of discipline, here's something that I think is great. We got a, a guy that played a long time uh, football, yeah. lifted heavy, uh, has little tweaks here and there like all of us do. But I love what he did. He still came back in, hit a decent weight, probably yeah. not for him, you know, um, but just deep and paused. I think that's a great job here, my friends. And yeah. I want the rest of the world to see this. He's still moving. And that's all I, that's all I preach about is just continue to move. Yep. It's key. If you, if you stay stagnant, it's just like a car, it'll just break down and it won't move. Like that point is stay active, keep moving. Well, you're the perfect example of this. You, you're this baseball guy and you did it. Yeah. And now you got these shoulders that are less yeah, destroyed higher than prime, but you still move through to force yeah. blood. Yes. Hey, got him, man. I mean, I, I like I said, that's, that's I know you that's say got him, like but that's you can't just say got him. You're a different breed. How do you get these guys to go? I'm going to be like John. I'm going to listen to John. John's still moving, and he's out there kind of banged up. Let me let me keep doing that. What do you tell these people? I, I, you know, I tell them, listen. I mean, there's different things that can possibly help you get through some of these things that you have, acute or chronic injury wise, like healing peptides, and that's what I utilize. I utilize BPC one five seven, but. You got to stay active and you got to keep moving. If you don't, man, you're just going to, you're not going to lose, you're going to lose mobility. You lose strength. You lose mass. I mean, atrophy in those arms or areas or, or whatever is, is going wrong. Right. Like, you know, if it's in your back or your neck, you can lose atrophy and have it down all down your arm or your side. It's the all different type of things. So I think it's really important to one, keep the mobility two to keep the strength up. Um, and keep moving, like I said. And BBC 157 and TV 500 have helped me tremendously. I need a total shoulder replacement on this arm. And I don't know what's going on with this one, with a slap tear or what, but I'm still not feeling good. But I'm still in there. Like, even this week, like, I can still push dumbbells. I'm pushing 100-pound dumbbells, I think, incline and flat. So, uh, that for me, I'm doing good. Do I want to do higher? Yes. This is a great question for you, Johnny. All right. Hello, Mike. I've noticed that my body has been getting weaker as I'm trying to get leaner as I want to shed some more fat. What would you suggest I do to get my energy back up? Well, one, how old are you? I would definitely get a blood test possibly, see what's going on there. Maybe some different things are off. Two, if everything's right on point, then we could definitely get some energy back up with some ECA Stack Plus or some other therapies that we have that can definitely rev some things up, give you the energy that you need. Um, but you know, if you're getting weaker and as you're getting leaner, are you, you know, you're decreasing your calories, you know, are you decreasing too much? I don't know. So at that point, that's another question we have to find out. Um, what, what's the ECA stack? Like? Sorry, I should, I should explain that. It's a Fedrin caffeine yeah, come aspirin. Come on. come on. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody knows ECA. Sorry guys. A Fedrin caffeine aspirin B12 and chromium. E C A and then the plus is the chromium and um, the chromium and the aspirin. Excuse me, not the chromium. The chromium and the B twelve. Jesus. Um, but what these things are going to do? So at that point, caffeine and the ephedrine are going to be both stimulants. They're going to create thermogenesis. They're going to give you energy, high mental clarity. And you have aspirin in there. And if you're allergic to aspirin, we can take it out. But we have it in there to thin the blood a little bit for no heart palpitations or issues. When you're on ECA. It shouldn't be like taking a pre-workout where you go blah, 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 and you're like itching and like you shouldn't be tweaked out. You should have nice, clean, full energy. Um, you know, you're stimulated, but you're not shaking. Your hands aren't clammy. And I think everybody knows that effect. Your stomach's growing. You have to go to the bathroom, the gym, taking a pre-workout. So at that point, that ECA sac plus 
would do tremendous things as far as energy and help with weight loss too as well. Uh, I'll just add in there. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would listen to what Johnny says about the options to keep you moving and keep going. You, you're stating two things from what I understand I'm reading here. You're saying that you're getting weaker, but then at the bottom you say, how can I get my energy back up? And so are you getting weaker and less energy? Cause that's just a deficit and you're training yeah. hard and that's basically what happens. So I wouldn't yep. stress that that's how you're feeling. I would listen to Johnny to get uh, the EAAs and get this. And so you can get a little bit more energy. Um, but also at the same time, I, you're in a deficit. Everybody loses a little strength. You lose a little energy. It's, yeah. it's why it's no, it's not that fun being in a deficit and slicing and dicing, but that kind of goes with it. But like Johnny says, and Johnny saved me on this last cut. Um, well, <laughs> it was the misses actually that saved me because uh, I was asked, uh, I did my blood work, went in and said, how you feeling? I go, like, shit, but that's, that goes with the territory. You know, I'm dieting I'm very hard when I'm mm -hmm. precise. And she goes, well, let's get you on this. And that's when I started. Um, yep. The EAs, the Hercules, the whole, the whole gambit of, yes. of uh, peptides and, and with the fat burners. And it's like, whew, save the ECAs, me. man. They're, they're, they're second to none. I think that's what most people take. It's a little capsule, so it's not an injection. It's very easy and simple for somebody to do. So somebody that wants weight loss, sometimes that's where they start because, like I said, it's good for – even if you were to say, like – because I got some people in the office. I'm like, listen, you can't do this. They're drinking, like, three monsters, those tall cans in front of me. And those things got, like, 300 milligrams of caffeine in them per can. I'm like, man, you're taking them – 900 milligrams you know what the <laughs> daily dose is like with the tolerance it's supposed to be 400 milligrams that's what the daily dose for a body is usually supposed to be now if you're a little bit overweight or whatever you're, you weigh a little bit more maybe you need a little more kick but if you can not take in that much caffeine that's better no. for you i mean for real Johnny, we're looking for a winner here to finish off today. All right. I'm approaching 40 workouts, work 60 hours a week in concrete. I lift oh. four times a week. Anything to help with recovery? My recovery is taking longer these days. So if you're approaching 40, we always go back to the blood test to see where those levels are at. Listen, at that point, if your recovery is sucking, one, you might need to recover better. My sleep might need to be better. Some things might need to be better there, but we need to check. We need to check that first. But other things that we can do, recovery, BPC, TB500, even Hercules Potion with injectable glutamine. This could help with recovering faster. But if it's taking longer than, than usual, then that could possibly mean that there might be something off on the inside, like testosterone possibly. And at this point, if it is low or it's on the lower end, you're not going to recover as fast. And if you get that optimal, you're going to recover faster. That's just what it is. Uh, uh, I'm just curious on what kind of concern. You must own the construction company. This guy's working 12-hour days. There's people out there that do. Union yeah. workers and stuff like that, 12-hour shifts. Holy sheesh, man. Two shifts. Man. That's like nurses. Oh. Nurses in the hospital, they work 12-hour shifts. Yeah, but that's not construct. That's not that's not concrete. That's holy yeah, shit. No, that's that, yeah, that's a different world sure. here. I, I know some guys that do uh, uh, Amazon uh, trucking. Uh, the, the packaging, yeah. the package, yeah. just the packaging. These guys are burning seven thousand calories a day, and the guy's one hundred and forty wow. pounds. It's like wow, you can't eat to recover. So, <laughs> two things here is that you are forty, and so you've you've already done your blood work. I guarantee you that. You're, you're not going to not do that just to see where your body's at. And so from that, numbers, I would talk to your provider over at Titan Medical on, on what to optimize your body. Because um, there's no way you'd come 60 hours a week at 40 years old and just keep tanking. And, I mean, I can't fathom the recovery. I don't do that kind of work. And it's hard right. for me to recover. So, yeah, get over the deal. You know, so, doing concrete and lifting four the, times a week. Get off the line right now. Go call Titan Medical. Yeah, the number's yeah. right there. And get that order in to get your blood work right now. Tell them Titan sent you. Yes. Give you a, 
a, a, a deal. Johnny, can you this guy a deal right here. Danny yeah, Boy. Yeah, listen, Danny Boy, if you sign up, tell him it's 130 for you. We'll give you the deal. Tell him Titan, Mike O'Hearn sent you over there. Get that going right this second. I want to hear what your levels are and hear what the next step is. Yes. All right. Go crush it, my man. Thanks for hanging today. And everybody, thanks for hanging out with me, Johnny, and, and, yeah. and Rod Dog Red. Have a great Thanksgiving, Johnny. I'll talk to you more. Did you get the yeah. video up? You, did we ready to show the people? Yeah, I'm ready to show the people. I'd like to leave the people with this this bad boy right here. I just want to show you. Titan Cybertruck. That blue light. Ooh. Super dope. You can change those colors any color you want. Look mean on the streets. Um, blessed. Blessed. Things awesome. like a spaceship rolling. Awesome. Thank you for hanging out today, Johnny. Thanks, guys. Good I appreciate you guys. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. We'll talk soon. Talk to you later.